Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another played up automation tutorial, food automation tutorial. And today I'm going to be talking about hamburgers or burgers uh, as it's listed in the, uh, in the game description. And when you do burgers, you start off with frozen patties and you start off with buns. So I'm going to show you a very simple automation to this. And this is using a danger hob. Now you can use any sort of, actually I'll do it here so it's a bit more visible for you guys. You can use any hob you want. It does not matter for this. If you don't want to upgrade a hob, you could use your starter hobs. Oops, that's not a starter hob. Starter hobs, it does not matter for this automation. Basically you're grabbing a, a frozen patty from your frozen patty bin or your uh, refrigerator, if you will. You're grabbing your buns and you're putting a combiner onto them. That's the simplest way. If you run this, this is going to pull out. It's going to cook as soon as it's finished cooking. It's going to put a bun, combine the bun right on. This is the most basic automation, full automation to make a frozen patty burger. Now, if you want to add on to that, you'd use a smart grabber like this going into a prep station. Again, this could be a frozen prep. I recommend using a smart grabber and setting it to a patty with a bun because if you don't, your first one that comes through may end up not having a bun because of the way the mechanics work on this. Um, a grabber will grab something quicker than a combiner combines with it if there's nothing in front of it. Uh, so a foolproof method is using a smart grabber. Now, if you're up to this set of automation, this one and the other one, these could both be smart grabbers. It does not matter for this demonstration. So I'm gonna run this real quick in your practice mode to show you exactly what happens here. And then we will get into fresh patties. So the bun comes across, waits, the burger cooks, and there you go. You could use a safety hob, starter hob, regular hob, danger hob. It does not matter what cooking method. However, if you upgrade your hob, as most people do, to try to get one, and you get a danger hob, I'd use a danger hob. So that's basic automation for that. Don't have to go into any more detail regarding that. But the next one would be making fresh patties. Now, fresh patties are a bit different because it requires eggs. And if you have fresh patties, you'll be, your eggs or your, your frozen patties will be replaced by the steak refrigerator or steak or freezer. And this, re this requires a couple extra things. One is like this, is you're basically mixing the meat, chopping it in a sense to make your chopped meat. And then I'm going to move the buns actually over to here. Like something like this. And I'll show you why in a second, because you have to have another combiner, which is going to be right here combining the egg, the cracked egg, oops, sorry, onto the meat. So you'd be basically be the same thing as you'd have for the meat. You'd have a grabber going to a mixer. Now, the way the mixers work is, is you don't have to use conveyor mixers. You could use regular mixers or rapid mixers or um, the conveyor mixers would all do the same thing. I would not use the heated mixer because when you crack an egg onto this, if there's nothing in front of it, the egg will start to cook. And that's not what you want. <laughs> um, doing it with the meat, it's fine because chopped meat shouldn't cook by itself because you're having to combine it with the egg. But as a foolproof method is just don't use heated mixers. Uh, I don't really recommend using heated mixers for anything because it will burn eventually. So this is basically how it's set up. Your meat will come from here, go to the mixer, it will chop it, be pushed onto the hob. Your egg will come, get cracked, be put into the combiner, put this out of the way, and it will also combine on the hob like this. And then you have your bun coming in, which is also going to combine on the hob. So you're basically combining all three ingredients onto the hob. Again, you, you'll have your smart grabber set up, and again, your frozen prep or regular prep or multiple preps. You could have one, two, three prep stations here. It does not matter. Um, after you have your initial smart grabber, how many after this you have. But let's get into this and I'll run, run this bit of simulation and I'll show you how this works. The meat comes across and gets chopped. Your egg is ready to go, your bun's ready to go. The only argument I have against using a conveyor mixer here would be to use a rapid mixer because the rapid mixer cooks a lot or chops a lot faster. Because as you see here, I'm pulling burgers off of here faster than they're being made. If this was a rapid mixer, you would this would be like one every, well, every probably second, 1.2 seconds or something like that. Because as soon as the rapid mixer is done, it'll feed it onto a belt and then onto here. So you would always have two prepared, this one and then the one on the grabber that would theoretically be between these two things. 
And that's basically how you set up frozen pat or excuse me, fresh patties and frozen patties. So it is it is pretty quick. But like I said, the only the only um, I'll get out of this so it stops making these noises for us. What I would do here differently is if I would have the option. If you're upgrading a mixer and you get a rapid mixer, I would use a rapid mixer here. If you just have a regular mixer, use that one here because the eggs are almost instant. You wouldn't need to have a rapid mixer for them. But again, if you're copying mixers and you have two rapid mixers, you by all means use a rapid mixer here. And you would just basically have a grabber in between this. It would be set up similar um, like this. And then the same thing, the meat would be set up the same way because you'd have to crack your egg and then the grabber would grab it from the mixer, put it onto the combiner, and there you go. But for demonstration purposes, safe spading, safe space saving purposes excuse me it's a mouthful you would do something like this again you can reconfigure this any way you like if space is an issue um and you don't want to have one sticking here you could probably tuck this in like this somehow i don't know how that would make it any easier i guess to line up more buns or something uh, don't know how it would be easier but again there are options how to lay this out you could lay it up and down from the bottom up it doesn't matter as long as you have all the ingredients being combined onto whatever hob you choose you have your smart grabber going into your prep station or frozen prep station. And I mean, at the end of the day, you, you could just have it going to a counter if you, if you haven't had any luck getting a prep station because prep stations are their own drop. They do not upgrade from a counter or any other item blueprint. They are their own separate blueprints. And then the frozen prep obviously goes up from there. Now, while, why I like regular prep stations early on is because a regular prep station only costs 20 coins. A frozen prep, which I don't have one to demonstrate, costs 60 coins. And something for burgers, because burgers cook so fast, I never really find a need to use a frozen prep, unless you're later in your run and you just have tons of frozen preps laying around, or you're discounting them to make them 30 coins or 15 or 7 or whatever. But otherwise, I would do something like this. And you could have this set up again differently, where your, where your prep station ends up out here, so you're not actually having to come into the kitchen at all to prep your burgers. You could have plates out here, etc., etc. Now, the only step up from this is you could have an auto plater plating. It would be plating it onto a counter um, because you can't plate onto this because you don't have enough space unless you get rid of this, which I don't know why you would do that, honestly. You'd have your auto plater facing into this, and you could have some sort of loop coming back in, and then this takes onto here. Like, there's many ways to reset this up, but... The tutorial purpose of the tutorial is to show you how to automate frozen patties, which are super, super simple. They require like three or four items and that's it. And to automate fresh patties, because sometimes people don't like taking fresh patties because it requires the chopping and chopping takes a while unless you have some sort of automation that's continually chopping meat for you. But yeah, it's, it's pretty simple uh, to be honest with you. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned or check in my other videos in this series, my, my uh, food automation tutorials. Uh, I'm planning on having some a video up for every sort of automation dish that's out there, breakfast, fish, etc. Some of them are already posted, or if you check back through this playlist, you will also see them, as well as the other playlists I have for Plate Up, as well as other guides, tips and tricks, basic tutorials, advanced tutorials, etc. I want to thank you guys for watching. This has been a fun video to make. Burgers as well as hot dogs are the most, hot dogs would be the most simplest thing to automate because you don't have a fresh hot dog card. So it would basically be the same setup as you'd have for frozen patties. It just would be your hot dog refrigerator. Everything else would be set up exactly the same way. And, you know, Bob is your uncle. Set your smart grabber, which is highly recommended, by the way, so you don't end up pulling cooked patties without a bun onto here. But nonetheless, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next food automation tutorial. Take care now.